Hello, everyone. Hopefully, you all can hear me well. I'm Natalie from Numbers Protocol. Uh, as we, uh, we, I shared yesterday at the, at the opening that we are really on a mission to really restore the trust, which we are quite losing right now on the internet. And uh, like uh, Lindsay just shared that a lot of people are gonna be voting around this year. Uh, anyone already votes this year already? Could you raise your hand? So uh, anyone gonna vote by the end of the year? I think it would also care a lot of, well, what's the result, what you have been seeing on the internet, on the news nowadays, I believe. And Taiwan is the first country that kickstart the whole year elections in January. And our team, uh, well, we are born out of Taiwan. Our founders are from Taiwan, and also a lot of team members are Taiwanese, which we do believe that we have a little responsibility to contribute by what we already built. And also, of course, by a lot of, a lot of experience we already did uh, with the other projects previously. So uh, back in 2023, at the end of the year, we know that the election is gonna be coming, and a lot of discussions in, in Taiwan as well. And with our very unique locations, we have been in the country, we suffered a lot on um, misinformation and cyber attack along the whole year especially during the election time. There, there are a lot of research, uh, uh, research institutions who often come to Taiwan to visit different institutions to understand how Taiwan government or how the whole country people are managing or how they are understand those attack on the, in the country in a different situations, let's say. So uh, in two, uh, uh, starting from 2023, by the end of the year, we start talking to different news medias in Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan is an island which is like small next to uh, China where when it comes to a very big event, a lot of news media, they would need to send the uh, correspondents to Taiwan to report everything for that. And I think by working on this kind of project and the tools, it actually brings a different message to the global news uh, publisher is that how those media content are authenticated can be a very strong proof they can use it in the other side of the, in the, other side of the world where they don't really need to send any people there anymore. This, I think that's a very uh, Im important signal to them. So we work with the local news media and independent journalists uh, back in Taiwan to start this project. So you can see that we actually also built a page where we educate the market and also to demonstrate that what happens uh, along the time. So we provide our solutions for everyone who are involved in the project, how they can use our application to authenticate uh, the media content, including photos, videos that's generated along the time to bring them uh, with all the metadata information to the network where on this page you can also see the real-time records, all the photos and those information that are sealed on the network all on this page. So some of them are contributed by the uh, professional uh, photographers, news media publishers, and also some of them are coming from the general people out there. So we do see, we do see our, well, our citizens who are using our application to record when the tickets being revealed along, when the votes are revealed in different towns, different cities. So I think this is a very interesting uh, uh, things that happening in, in Taiwan because I think, like I say, it's very unique of the Taiwan uh, location and positions. So people do care a lot of the results. Also that we won't be able to make this happen without those partners that we have been working together, especially with the Filecoin, with Standard Lab, and also with the uh, IPFS team as well. Uh, some of the things that we already make uh, along this project is that, of course, uh, there are around 1K of media assets that's being registered uh, solely, but just on this project. And also that right after the vote in well, uh, April or uh, May, where there's a protest happens in Taiwan because they were, well, always the uh, different 
discussion between the parties and how they manage the government, et cetera. So there was a protest where the, one of the politicians, they actually used our application to record uh, those changes on, on our network. So they wanna, he want to keep that moment on the chain to prove that something actually happened at the moment. And then right after that, uh, we worked continuous for the elections in India and also Indonesia as, as well. So we make the same page for all three elections so, and also with their local language so that people get to understand more of how this can be done. And uh, at the same time, uh, Taiwan, uh, we have, the, have a very huge or important uh, products back 10 years ago. We call it Sunflower Movement. So the, the journalists that work with us are very interested in how, or they, say they, are, they see the impact that how our application can be done. So we work together again to build a page and a network, they say a, a, a data set where we authenticate all the media content back then from the Sunflower Movement. So this is a big archive currently uh, around 2K pieces. And we see more interest coming from different, uh, let's say, uh, non-profit or non-government -gov non uh, institution would like to archive their assets as well. And of course, we get some exposures on the media side to share that how this can actually impact or how this can actually change with the way we see media content. So to, let's say, zoom out a bit, of course, that a lot of people are gonna be votes this year and a lot of actions, a lot of discussions currently happening around the world. And like United States gonna be having the most uh, important elections uh, this year uh, by the end. And also that recently in, around in EU, there are like UK, France, there are different elections going on. And right now we are getting, I think most of us are getting very difficult like how I just share is that how you can even uh, define or how you can even make a decision if whether you should trust that videos that you came across just uh, on the reels, on Instagrams. How do you even know it's a real one or not? As that a lot of times it's just so real that you couldn't, you couldn't even differentiate at all. And there are a lot of challenges in this AI era where is that like fake contents, it's very easy to be uh, spread out, especially how we heavily rely on news media. Like one of the research that I saw is that in South Korea, there's uh, more than half of the populations in, this, in their countries are relying on news like YouTube and TikTok as their news chain, main news source, which is pretty crazy and also a bit dangerous, let's say. So our team also recognized that provenance is really the key that we can build back to the trust into the content that we consume every day. And Numbers is an early member of C2PA, which is an initiative started by Adobe and a few of the big tech giants that uh, its mission is to uh, advocate the importance of provenance. So they basically offered uh, also sort of a framework or some of the open source tool where your team or different businesses can implement into your service, which they offer, they help to record the editing history of the media pieces. And but this is an off-chain record that's uh, in part of, manifest in part of the, the, the image file. But then it, if any, if some of you are more technical aware that you will know that when you bring this media file across different platforms, there's a huge chance that this, those metadata or those uh, manifests will be lost. Especially when, if you uh, post uh, photos on Twitter, basically those are already removed. So what numbers do here is basically we enhance C2PA with the blockchain records. Some uh, audience ask that, so when those metadata are lost, how do we keep those records? That's where blockchain work. So what numbers do here that uh, with our solutions that we bring the media file and all the, also the metadata information on the chain with all the records. And we are tracking the life cycle of the content itself. So then you can see that uh, 
This is uh, some of the application that we cover from mobile interface, desktop solution, and also SDK that uh, easier for uh, to say general to use. I think in this, in this conference, we discussed a lot how we can make application much easier or accessible to business and individuals. So we try to make it more, let's say, web two friendly to the business. And also try to lower the gap between how people perceive blockchain. And uh, one note is also here that Capture Eye is the widget that we, where we uh, develop uh, for more business when they are trying to be, build the trust between their content and their business. I will also demo this more uh, afterwards. So come back here is that we bring the content uh, to the network with the, the file itself and also the metadata information. The file is stored on the IPFS and also with the, the content identity which is unique that we leverage uh, the, the CID as the ID of the passport number of this content, and then the metadata info, including also the licensing as well, where we bring to the chain, and then we are recording the life cycle of that. And also with the content history, that will be able to record that uh, when it's first initial registered, how the content has been, let's say, having a license transfer, ownership transfer, or being used, being adopted by different parties, this all are transparent within this page. And every asset would have their own page individually. So uh, when it comes to that, uh, I think some people would, well, like we are coming across those media contents on the internet. How do we make a decision to trust or not? That's where the verify engine will work. So uh, I think most of the time we are using Google to search to find out more information. And, but when you uh, try to find images online, Google doesn't really give you much information, but just more website. But what numbers do here is that we build this Verify Engine, which is free to use for anyone out there. They can throw it in by the image itself, also by the CID. Then they can search. It will give you the exact image result and also similar image results. And like you can see that uh, you can actually read more by those uh, provenance info of each of them to make a judgment that whether this coming from a real, uh, a real creator or actually coming from the other. So uh, I think throughout the whole track today, you will be heard a lot of like how Numbers has been supporting in different projects. Uh, Lindsay also gonna share more as well. I think uh, Numbers also uh, has been a very uh, proud member that can, can be tech part of it. Our tech teams is very, uh, I would say, they're pretty awesome to, to work on it. And uh, at the same time, like, we really want to make this more accessible for the general roles and the business side because it would only work better or that said this would only have more impact when there are more business or more individuals uh, adopt it. So we also work together with the content creators themselves and also the business side where they can also adopt uh, our technology. Uh, Numbers Protocol is the teams that behind all the things that have been done. Uh, we are also building this network. You can see more like that's a huge library that we are building with all the, data, uh, all the media assets with their metadata and content history there where in the future that people can query or they can, let's say, when they try to look for more info, that's where they can come to numbers. And we uh, were still in the very, very early days for this kind of tech, and we are also having our partnership programs that can allow either individuals or business to try out uh, our technology with very low barrier. So uh, if you are interested, uh, come, let's have a chat or just contact us to know more about it.